Welcome to our lecture online. Another way of understanding exponential functions better is take a look and see how they change when you have these particular changes in the function itself. So here we start with the base function y equals 2 to the x and we've drawn the appropriate graph four times to illustrate what that looks like, but how does the function change? How does the graph change of that function when we write y equals 2 to the minus x instead or y equals 2 to the x minus 1 in the exponent or what, we, what happens when we write y equals minus 2 to the x or what happens when we write y equals 2 to the x plus 1 where the plus 1 is not in the exponent. Well, let's take a look. First of all, y equals 2 to the negative x power. Well, what does that mean, 2 to the negative x? Well, we can change it into a positive exponent by bringing the 2 into the denominator. So this can be written as 1 over 2 to the x power, which is equal to 1 half to the x power. And then we realize, just like we saw in the previous video, that when we compare y equals 2 to the x to y equals 1 half to the x, it basically gives you the mirror image about the y-axis, so that function will look like this. It will still go to this point where we have uh, uh, x equals 0, y equals 1, so it still goes to the point 0, 1, or where the y-axis is equal to 1. But here you can see that's basically a mirror image about the axis, uh, the y-axis right there. Looking at our second example, what happens when we subtract 1 from the exponent? Well, that means that when x equals 2, 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. That means it really moves the function over to, well, either to the right or to the left. When we put a negative in there, it moves the function to the right because it takes longer to grow. So if, it, if the point right there where it crosses the y-axis is the point 0, 1, so when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1, well, to accomplish the same thing, when we put a minus 1 in there, now x has to be 1, so when we subtract 1 from that, we get 0, and that will then move the function to the right. So when x is equal to 1, y will be equal to 1, moves the function to the right. When x is equal to 2, y will be, well, 2 minus 1 is 1, y will be equal to 2, so we'll be right over here. So when x equals uh, 2, y will be 2, oh, Sorry, I'll take that back. Y will be 2 right here. Can't grow that fast. So basically, it took the whole function, moved it to the right. So what happens is the function will look like this. And then, of course, I need to put that back. Make that again, a continuous line right there. Okay, so minus 1, just like with any algebraic function, it simply moves it to the right 1. If it says x to the minus 2 in the exponent, we move the function to the right 2. If it says x plus 1 in the exponent, it would actually move the function to the left one unit. All right, let's take a look at our third example. What happens when we put a negative in front of the function? y equals negative 2 to the x instead of y equals 2 to the x. That gives you a mirror image about the y-axis. So remember that this here is the y-axis. And did I say y-axis? I meant to say x-axis. If I said y-axis, it gives you a mirror image about the x-axis. It takes the whole function and brings it down like this. So that function would look like this and it would cross the point right here at 0 minus 1. So it's simply a mirror image when we put a negative in there. That makes sense because whatever value we had in the positive direction, for example, when x equals 2, 2 to 2 is 4. If we now put a negative in front of it, that makes it negative 4, so therefore the mirror image in that direction. And finally, if we have y equals 2 to the x power plus 1, where plus 1 is not in the exponent, it simply raises the whole function up by one unit. If we say y equals 2 to the x minus 1, it would actually drop the whole function by one unit, which means instead of going through the y-axis at the point 0, 1, it's now going to the y-axis at point 0, 2. And so the function simply is raised up by one unit and looks like that. Eventually, as x gets big, you can barely see the difference here and that will converge, almost will not be able to see the difference between the two functions as x becomes a large number. And that's how you can understand what exponential functions are and how they react when we make changes to the function in these various ways. That's how we learn these functions.